All right, everyone, thank you. Without further ado, let's get started. We are talking about whether or how green is Bitcoin mining. It's a lot of people want to know. We've got an excellent group here of experts from the industry who will let us know. So first, I'd like to let everybody on our panel introduce themselves. Let's start at this end over here with Adam. Go right ahead. I'm uh, Adam Haynes, founder and CEO of Simple Mining. We operate uh, about 30 megawatts of mining in Iowa and do hosting, re hosting and repairs. My name is Brian Consalvo. I am a partner with KPMG. Uh, last year, I authored a paper called Bitcoin's Role in the ESG Imperative, uh, which outlined a number of the benefits that Bitcoin mining provides, um, and then also dispelled a number of misconceptions that I think are, are, are still around today. Hi, my name is Bob Davidoff, founder and CEO of Bentos Mining. And uh, we develop mining projects uh, all over the world, uh, a lot of them in Texas and Pennsylvania, and excited to be here on the panel today. Great, thank you all very much. And of course, I'm Margot Pies. I'm a fellow at the Bitcoin Policy Institute, and I am the moderator on today's panel. All right, so let's get started. I'd, I'd love to start with you, Brian. Maybe you can set the tone for us. Tell us a little bit about what inspired you and KPMG to put this report together. What was the, the atmosphere like around the narrative of Bitcoin mining? So at KPMG, I lead one of our technology risks center of excellence. Um, and what we have focused on quite a bit over the past few years are digital assets, uh, Bitcoin in particular. Um, so that's sort of been a jumping off point for uh, publications and things like that that we've been able to, to put out. And I got the idea early in, I guess, 2023. I just at that time, we were starting to see a lot of negative press around Bitcoin mining. I think Bitcoin more broadly. And I just had a number of ideas that were coming to mind where I, don't, I didn't really think that the other side of the story was being told. So we decided to partner with, uh, I think some of you may know Troy Cross. Uh, he was someone that I worked with behind the scenes uh, just to do some of the editing uh, and, and just understanding some of these complex matters. But what we ultimately, what I ultimately found out is that there are a number of tremendous benefits that Bitcoin mining offers uh, as it relates to renewable energy. I think a lot of these things we've, we've heard discussed today, I think for those of you that were here yesterday, um, I think the one that I'll, I'll call out that, that was really fascinating to me is uh, Bitcoin mining's use of methane as part of methane mitigation strategy. So companies like Crusoe Energy have done this. I believe there was a really nice 60 minutes piece on them. Um, and if you think about the fact that methane is 80 times more potent than carbon dioxide over a 20-year period, it's a very low-hanging fruit and easy way to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So if you're able to put Bitcoin miners at all of these gas wells uh, where they're ultimately just flaring gas to avoid it going directly into the atmosphere, I mean, I think that's just a win-win. And it's, I find it very difficult um, for anyone who might refute that or suggest that that's a bad use of power. Yeah, I'd love to open this up to the rest of the panelists. What other misconceptions have you seen or, or do you feel people have about the industry and what each of you do? Oh, I think the biggest misconception is that the usage of power, like using power is, you know, for the way we think about it, is green hooking into renewable energies, facilitating renewable energy projects. Uh, that's what Bitcoin does. So the use of power is green. When you actually look at trying to not use power, that doesn't mean that that's not green. So using or harnessing energy in the right ways and doing it, you know, re, you know looking at renewable energies, looking at, uh, like Brian's saying, uh, how do you, you look at flare gas mitigation or methane mitigation, and really leveraging the technology of Bitcoin to integrate into our grid and integrate into and facilitate renewable energy projects. The uses of power is actually what makes Bitcoin green. And I always like to say that. Well, everyone's like, and it's the topic of this panel, how green is Bitcoin? I want to say it's the greenest because of how we facilitate and you know, work together on renewable projects. 
Yeah, just to add to that, um, Bitcoin mining um, naturally just seeks renewable energy because it's a very low cost of energy. Um, and Bitcoin mining actually helps, it works well with renewable energy and the fact that, you know, wind and solar and other renewables are intermittent and Bitcoin can, you know, very quickly react when there's no sun or no wind, when there's no energy from these renewable um, generating sources to react and shut down. Um, which actually allows the um, ability to build out more renewable energy because Bitcoin miners are buyers of that energy 24-7. And the very small percentage of the time when those sources are not generating electricity, Bitcoin miners can curtail to react to that. Yeah, oh, go right ahead, Brian. You sure? Okay. Yeah, I, I just wanted to you know, dig a little bit deeper into that. So what... what pushes Bitcoin miners towards these particular types of energy sources? I mean, why, I mean, it sounds like the future of Bitcoin mining is not coal plants, but it sounds more like wind farms, solar farms, or grids that have a large amounts of these types of power generators. And I know that where you're located, maybe you can also talk a little about that, that there is a lot of renewable energy there. I mean, why, why locate there? What, what's driving you to do that? Yeah, so our sites are located across Iowa, and Iowa is the number one state in the country for wind power production from a percentage standpoint. So it's no accident that we are located in Iowa. Um, wind energy is, you know, very, um, very low cost as far as, you know, the, the cost of electricity, um, which Bitcoin miners are, are naturally going to find the lowest cost of power um, to run their operation. Um, so yeah, as, as you continue to expand and um, be the, you know, the buyer of energy 24-7 at those low prices, it just enables the expansion of more and more solar, more and more wind, and it really works well as that load balancing mechanism. Because again, if the sun's not shining and the wind's not blowing, we still have to have energy come from somewhere, and that's where Bitcoin miners can really help you know, uh, balance that system out. I think that's also going back to your question about misconceptions is... The average person doesn't really understand how our grid works. I mean, I was one of those people as well, and I still, to this day, am no, no expert. But I think a lot of people take for granted the way energy is delivered to our homes, to our offices, etc. The good thing about coal energy is, is it can scale up and scale down in real time very easily. Um, and I think some people probably question, well, why can't we just take all of the coal plants out, replace them with wind and solar. And I think, you know, the panel before us did a really good job explaining the fact that, well, those are intermittent energy sources. And one of the most important things with balancing a grid is making sure that supply and demand match. And to do that, it sometimes takes a little bit of luck. So what Bitcoin miners are able to do is co-locate around what a lot, a lot of times is often energy that is stranded or wasted. Uh, so that's when prices can start to go negative, and that is a huge price signal for Bitcoin miners. Go ahead, Bob. Sure. I wanted to just add on to what Brian and I was saying because of some really great points here. Is that what other technology, you know, uh, Bitcoin is such a great use case to integrate into wind or solar. It's such a great complement or integration point to renewable energy on how we can basically help balance, create flexible load, curtail. There's just such an amazing synergy with Bitcoin and renewable energies. Wind's a, a great example. You know, so the wind fluctuates over time, right? So now you can look at Bitcoin mining going in and complement that and basically help balance and, and you know, have that flexible load. So the way that Bitcoin can integrate into renewable energies is really amazing because sometimes, you know, <laughs> There's so much energy or there's stoppage of energy through wind turbines that you might have to put the brakes on literally and figuratively. So here you can now complement and use Bitcoin mining to basically allow us to use that renewable energy and then also just really create to facilitate projects of renewable energy as well. Yeah, absolutely. So some of our mem members in our audience may not be familiar too much with the balancing challenges and what curtailment is. I was wondering if maybe you could elaborate a little bit more, maybe give a very, very quick 101 on, on how, why that matters right now, especially as we're adding a lot more wind and solar. Sure. One of the, the best analogies that I like giving out there is if you're American Airlines or Delta and you're on a flight, right, and so now you have all these empty seats, let's call that 
basically power all these electrons. And then you have a buyer saying, hey, you know, we're Bitcoin. We're going to come in. We're going to take every empty seat on that flight. Would you like that, American Airlines? So I think you know, every utility or anything is like, you know, I all agree. Wait, you're going to fill up those seats. That's basically now the connection into the grid. And they was like, okay, but what happens if there's an emergency? What happens if, you know, this family needs to catch a flight? And you're like, so as Bitcoin miners, then we'll say, hey, look, if you guys really need that, since we're decentralized, which is an amazing concept, and we're this basically non-mission critical load where we have the flexibility to do things like this, we will bow and allow that seat for that flight. So it's the same thing with electricity in the grid. We're here, we create this very consistent, sustainable load, which utilities like. We're not fluctuating, so we actually take away volatility. And then at the same time, when emergencies are needed, we will basically jump off that seat to allow hospitals, to allow communities to take that energy. Just to add to that, I think um, maybe another misconception is that Bitcoin miners are competing with, you know, other people for energy usage. And that's just not how it works. So in times where, say, that there's a lot of demand on the grid, everybody, it's a very hot day, everybody's trying to run their air conditioner, Bitcoin miners are going to be the first to react to that situation because in an event where there's high demand, that also means that there's going to be high pricing. So Bitcoin miners are going to react very quickly, and we're not competing with you know, anybody to run their air conditioner on a day when it's 100 degrees outside. We're the first to react and shut down in those instances. Yeah. So let's see. What about batteries? So people say, well, batteries do pretty much what Bitcoin miners do. They can balance the grid. They're clean, they're green. Uh, why, why Bitcoin mining? What, what makes it unique or is it, or is it competitive? Does it compete with batteries? Are they complementary? What's going on here? Yeah, so batteries um, and Bitcoin miners, in my opinion, are sort of um, maybe on opposite ends of the spectrum. So uh, Bitcoin miners are naturally seeking, um, you know, abundant and excess energy, you know, because that's where it's going to be the lowest cost of power, where there's an abundance of energy, you know, 98, 99% of the time. And in the 1% to 2% of the time when there's a significant amount of demand or pricing is very, very high, Bitcoin miners are going to react and shut down in that um, situation. Batteries are a little bit different situation where they're, you know, essentially they want to charge during times of low energy and then, um, you know, expense that energy during times of period to help balance things out. And especially in Iowa, um, that doesn't happen very often, so it's just a very low um, you know, usage, if you will, versus Bitcoin miners are running 98, 99% of the time, batteries are going to have a much lower power factor of when it actually is you know, economically viable to deploy that battery. The other thing I'll say is batteries are very expensive, and I think there's still some t uh, technological limitations with how much energy it can store. Um, I think it's one of those things where if it was... It's easy to use batteries is what we naturally would think of. I think it would be used at a, a much larger scale. So I think you should ask yourself, why aren't we using more batteries? And it's typically going to come down to the cost of it. Um, the other thing I'll say uh, about batteries, like Bitcoin can really kind of serve as that battery because they're able to soak up so much of that stranded and wasted energy that, again, I go back to the point that these renewable energy sources have to overbuild the amount of energy production that they have. So inevitably, there are going to be huge peaks and troughs with where you have that supply-demand mismatch, and Bitcoin miners fit in so perfectly in that situation. Just to add to that really quickly, um, another common misconception is that windmills have lots of damage and they need lots of repairs all the time. You'll be driving down the road in Iowa and just see on a windy day and you'll see you know, half of the wind turbines just not working or spinning or anything like that. And that's a function of just there's nowhere to send that energy. There's, there's just too much supply of energy. So even if they were able to turn on, there's no buyer to take that energy. There's, no, there's not enough demand in the system to take every single windmill operating at that time. Just add a, a quick comment. I really loved uh, what Brian said. Is like, okay, here's batteries in Bitcoin, and Brian's like, well, Bitcoin can be looked at as a battery. I love that. I, you know, I think of the same concept. You know, Bitcoin is this dynamic, real-time battery that can do just as much, if not more, at lower capital costs and things like that for batteries. But I also feel that it's complementary. 
And uh, just uh, one last comment on that. It's basically push and pull. You know, as you guys are saying, batteries will discharge or expense in, and then Bitcoin mining can shut off or curtail. So there is basically an ebb and flow there, and so they could be complementary as well. So let's get back to methane mitigation, Brian. You brought that up earlier. Critics of Bitcoin mining in terms of its environmental footprint have questioned the methane mitigation narrative. You know, they've, they've said things like, well, okay, maybe, but isn't this going to extend the lifetime of fossil fuels? Isn't it going to increase their profits? And I, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that and, and what you've, you've researched and what you found. So I'll take Exxon as an example, because they're the ones that are partnering with Crusoe uh, to implement these methane mitigation strategies. The primary benefit that a company like Exxon gets from allowing Crusoe to come in and mine off their flare gas is to be able to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions and achieve some of the commitments and goals that they've made around climate change. The amount of revenue that they're earning is relatively insignificant, and you can you can figure this and prove this out simply by looking at their financial statements. There's no mention of the revenue that they're receiving uh, from Crusoe because it's not material to their financial statements. So that alone should show you that this is not something that they're doing to make money. Sure, everyone likes to make a little bit of side cash for something that would have otherwise made absolutely nothing. But the primary purpose for them is the actual um, climate reduction, achieving those, those goals and commitments that they made. Any other insights from the group before I ask another question? <laughs> another question. Okay. <laughs> yeah, another question, please. Okay. Well, Bob, I actually, my next question is for you. <laughs> So, you know, we've talked a lot about Bitcoin using renewable energy. We've talked about methane mitigation. We've talked about grid balancing. But I think that you also have some really fascinating insights on the technological innovation and the efficiency side that makes Bitcoin green or greener. And you're working on some really fascinating projects like a carbon capture technology that incorporates Bitcoin mining. And for anyone who's not familiar with carbon capture, that's basically literally trying to pull carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and put it somewhere else, like storing it underground or in rocks or putting it into old oil wells, things like that. So you're, you're working on some really fascinating projects. You showed me something you were doing earlier with solar panels. Could you, could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, well, I think that's the beauty of Bitcoin. And so I always like to say if it wasn't for Bitcoin, Bitcoin is what drove us as a company to get into renewables and also drove us to get into carbon capture. You know, if it wasn't for Bitcoin, we would have done none of those things. So Bitcoin basically with being innovative and then always looking at technologies and for the progressive, you know, progressiveness of humanity, if you're, you know, a purist like that, you really want to help, you know, the world, the environment, and basically, you know, uh, how things are getting created and, and innovation. So long story short on that is carbon capture. So carbon capture is a fascinating thing. You know, companies are doing this and carbon capture, this is called direct air carbon capture. There's a lot of great, even here at the show, like, okay, what's the use cases for heat? So we're realizing the byproducts of Bitcoin mining is air, airflow, and heat, and then other things, right? So it's like, how can you leverage those byproducts to continue to basically add and create innovative stuff? So with, with that being said, a lot of people are using heat for greenhouses. A lot of people are using the heat from Bitcoin mining to now heat buildings. We're actually taking the heat and not just the heat because what else is a byproduct? If you're doing air cooled, now you have large volumes of airflow. I mean, right now, there's carbon in this air that we're breathing. So we're taking the airflow and the heat and integrating that into Bitcoin mining to remove carbon. So here it is when you're like, hey, well, how green is Bitcoin mining? I really think it's pretty green. If we're coming up with stuff with tapping into renewables and then also you know, now using Bitcoin mining to remove carbon from our atmosphere, you know, it's just really exciting stuff that we're all working on. So a lot of people in the industry have felt singled out. A lot of miners feel singled out in the political atmosphere in terms of regulations. We had the EIA 
a mandatory survey that got a lot of pushback from the industry. And so I wanted to open this up to everybody. Maybe, have you thought about why there are these mis conceptions exist, why the industry appears to be singled out, and or is it even legitimate, like, is it real, really true that this industry is being singled out, or is it just a, a perception of the industry itself? I'll, I'll take this one. I think you guys can probably jump into the specifics, but sort of at a high level, I, I definitely feel that Bitcoin as a whole has been singled out quite a bit. Um, it's One of the things that I always come back to is I still think a lot of us in this room who are proponents of Bitcoin, uh, I would probably say Bitcoin at the very least is a hobby of everyone. We forget how many people out there still just don't know anything about Bitcoin. We see these conferences, we see how much they grow year over year. We see the price of Bitcoin appreciate, we see the ETFs come, we see all this adoption, but I still think if you go to any party at night and you ask people about Bitcoin, you're probably one of the few, if not the only ones there that understands it. And I think for me, what's been very challenging about really becoming a believer in Bitcoin is it requires you to become an expert in so many different fields. You have to understand monetary policy, you have to understand technology, you have to understand energy and markets. That's just a lot for the average person to really grok and get their head around and actually spend the time. So it's very easy to cherry pick certain things like Bitcoin is consuming, is on track to consume all of the world's energy. I think that was a headline from a reputable news source back in 2017. Obviously, fast forward seven years, it's not consuming anywhere close to that. So to me, I think it's just still something that is such an esoteric uh, industry that requires you to be... Um, to understand so many complex ideas to really put it all together that it, there's just still so few people that, that have that understanding. Yeah, I agree with all those points. And um, like you said, the kind of the misconception of Bitcoin um, and then, you know, Bitcoin uses a lot of energy. So, you know, people can jump to conclusions very quickly there. Um, if you look, um, we actually need to generate more energy and create more um, ener energy generating resources. Um, if you look just across countries across the world, um, one of the easiest uh, metrics to track human quality of life is annual kilowatt hour consumption. And Bitcoin, this kind of all goes back to starting with Bitcoin, is Bitcoin miners are buyers of energy 24-7, which allows you know, more energy infrastructure to be built. So as much as we talk about technology, uh, for me, when you ask that question, uh, I think of more of philosophy. And so when you look at a lot of the greats and you look at history, most of the greats are ridiculed be you know, before they're revered, right? And then they're, you know, and then they're also mocked. And so I like to think of Bitcoin as another great. So that's a great technology. So to, to me, you know, in basically uh, society and, and looking you know, time over time, basically a lot of great stuff gets ridiculed before it gets revered. And, you know, just on panels like this, we'll keep proving, we'll keep showing the use cases, we'll keep bringing the education and awareness to show exactly just how green Bitcoin mining is. Fantastic. So, Adam, you, you brought up a little bit of the social value side of Bitcoin mining, right? It's, it's green, like we've established that there's a lot of opportunity for Bitcoin to be really good and, and be a a player in uh, building out and sustaining sustainably green energy. But we haven't really talked a lot about how this impacts people at a societal level, especially, I think, people in developing parts of the world where access to electricity has, for the most part, been very difficult. But now we're starting to see companies like Gridless, for example, going into these areas, working with the communities. So I was wondering if maybe, Adam, if, if you would like to maybe expand on that a little bit, talk a little bit about that site, and then open it up to the rest of the panel. Yeah, exactly. So Bitcoin mining is, is seeking in those areas where there's low cost of energy. And to be able to build out all of that infrastructure, which then can be deployed to you know, the local area in, in times of need, is, is, is very beneficial. Um, we're very fortunate here in the U.S. where we have, for the most part, very stable grid systems and very few power outages. But that's not the reality um, around the world. Bitcoin mining will help balance 
um, that grid system out to where there's, it's more reliable over time. I think the stuff that Gridless is doing is, is probably one of the hallmarks of the industry right now. They've been featured in a number of documentaries. I know I got to see a, a good bit of the, um, the premiere of Dirty Coin, which highlights the stuff that Gridless is doing in, in Malawi, Africa. And I just don't know how anyone can watch that and not see tremendous value that Bitcoin is offering to those that are far less fortunate than us in the United States who, to Adam's point, we probably take for granted the fact that when we go home at night, we can just flip a switch and there's electricity. We can turn the AC on or the heat on. There's so many people around the world that don't have that luxury. And I think we're seeing a lot of really good use cases where that's really solving a significant problem. I forget the specific number, but when I wrote that paper last year, I, it was in the hundreds of millions of people around the world that do not have electricity. And I don't think any of us here can for a minute think of what life would be like even for a few days without electricity. All right, so we have about a minute left on the panel. So what, what I'd like to do is ask the panelists to think about the future of Bitcoin mining and where you think it's going in terms of it being this green powerhouse, or will it continue to, to be able to serve this kind of role going into the future? And I, and I want to add into that uh, that part of the reason why I ask is because over the next this next decade, we are going to see a lot more load coming onto the electrical grid. We're going to see more hydrogen, a lot more electric vehicles, heat pumps, and all of these new technologies will also have a certain amount of flexibility as well. So there is, there is potential for competition for Bitcoin mining in the role that it's playing right now. So I was just wondering where you think Bitcoin mining will be you know, in, in the context of being green in the next decade or so? Yeah, I think the data highlights that over the past few years, Bitcoin mining has been continuing to be on an uptrend in, in using renewable energy, and that's only going to continue as Bitcoin miners are always seeking the lowest cost of energy. Um, and that's going to be their role. They're going to be the, you know, the highest volume purchaser looking for the lowest cost of energy and that flexible load that can balance things out. Um, in a situation with electric cars, you might not have a choice, you know, if you're driving your car and you need to stop and charge to get somebody somewhere, you can't wait, you know, um, for that cheap cost of electricity to charge your car. So Bitcoin miners, I think, are going to have, um, you know, continue expanding in that and um, just, again, help facilitate the growth of renewable energy. Just to add on to what Adam says is a lot of people say Bitcoin's digital energy. We really like to agree with that. And so energy management is a, a really great use case. So as the grid grows and adds more renewable, Bitcoin is the asset that is going to continue to be integrated into our grid to help with everything you know, that everyone's saying here on the panel. And then now look at you know, to manage that energy and really help facilitate the grid. I know we're up against time, but just to wrap it up, my, my prediction is that at some point, Bitcoin miners will start to enter into power purchase agreements with new energy development projects so that they can contractually um, purchase all of that, be that off taker that these, that these companies are looking for that oftentimes is not very economical in the early days. Great. So is there anything else that we didn't touch on that you'd like to say right now before we have to get off stage. <laughs> Just anything about Bitcoin being green that we maybe missed? I think we covered it. I don't Got have it. anything Did we else. Did get everything? <laughs> Just to emphasize again, you know, how green is Bitcoin? It's the greenest, in my opinion, in, when we look at this kind of stuff. All right. Well, you've heard it from the panelists. It's the greenest. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And again, our panelists are Adam Hayes, Brian Consolvo, and Bob Davidoff. And I'm Margo. Take care. Next year, we are bringing the Bitcoin Conference to the American West, Las Vegas. 
brightest minds in the world will converge to deliver Bitcoin history. Buy your tickets now at b.tc slash conference slash 2025.